out of respect for his feelings and his privacy, I've decided not to comment any further at the moment about uh, yeah. our relationship. But in the book, you know, it was, first of all, uh, I am so proud to have a brother like Barack who has done amazing things. You know, he's, a lot of people expect him to do more than he can do. I mean, he's got more white hairs, that's for sure. Yes, he has. And uh, he can't solve everything. No. But at the same time, I remember that at a very difficult time during the campaign, and I write about this in the book, it was Barack who said to me, and I was concerned that I was going to affect his campaign, you know, because of China and the influences of China and, and communism and all of that sort of stuff. And I remember that it was Barack who said to me when I told him about I'm sorry, I hope I haven't disappointed you in any way. And he said, don't worry, Mark. I always support you and follow your own path. It will not affect me, it will not affect the election, but always follow your own path. And I've done that. Wow. He told you that. Yeah. And you went to the first inauguration, did you? Yes. I recall, I recall that in the book, too. Do you? Yeah. Yes. What was that like? It was amazing. I mean, we all watched it live. Oh, wasn't oh, it? Oh. The energy in the oh. air. Man, despite the chill in Washington D.C. Yes, in that yes. Janu on that January morning, it was it was a it was an amazing time. You know, there was this just. I was in Washington D.C. and I remember uh, the energy in the air. There was this something positive. It was like the world was changing in many ways. The first black president of the United States, a Kenyan in, in a Kenyan in in spirit, yes. for the, through his father, yes. you know, but an American nevertheless, yes. a global person. And then at the same time, you know, the feeling that America can change itself in the middle of crisis. It has this amazing ability when it's about to collapse to reinvent itself. And America was able to do that. I remember going up on the streets and there was this, the subways were so full. You know, I tried to get a subway mm -hmm. up to where I was going mm -hmm. and I was pushed out. You know, I was, was pushed up. Packed. Yeah. Yeah. You know, a friendly hand just pushed me up. Sorry, dude, you can't get on there. You know? And <laughs> Did they know who you are? Uh, no. Did I was, they know who you were? No. No. And I wasn't trying to advertise it. Yeah. But I remember, you know, I, uh, we took a cab. I, there were no cabs going into downtown for the inauguration, that day of the inauguration. I had my tickets. I had my invitation. I was staying with a friend. And I, as I recount in the book, and I managed to coax a, ca a cab driver into trying to go through the police gauntlet because all of the roads were closed around Washington, D.C. Yeah. And he took pity on me, I think. <laughs> and uh, a very nice fellow. Yeah. And we went through uh, these deserted highways towards uh, the Capitol. Mm -hmm. And there were police cars on the sides of the road. And we were stopped by a police car.